Hello everyone, it's our pleasure to share what we learned from the reduction to Linux system called OHEAD for event-driven service. Software that heavily interact with the underlying operating system suffers from system called OHEAD. Particularly, system called heavy application have been reported to be slowed down up to 30% with kernel patch table isolation known as KPTI, which is the widely deployed mitigation for side channel attacks such as Meltdown. That is why we should think of the potential solution to reduce system code overheads. To be exact, we revise the cost of CPU mode switch and figure out the corresponding impact. There are many impressive and practical ways to bypass kernel for system core specific performance boost. However, kernel bypassing is unlikely to ensure full Linux system compatibility, and we do care about virtualized environments such as AWS Cloud, where kernel bypassing is not allowed in guest OS. Recently, we are working on a approach of system code batching with minimal code ch changes against existing application and Linux kernel. By means of system code batching, CPU mode switch overhead can be reduced and even driven applications such as web server can be more efficient for most small payloads. Our approach requires no kernel image modification which implies the maximum capability and the developer experience. Meanwhile, we found that it was not sufficient for event-driven service since the approach might cause notable latency because of batching. Then we adapt IO urine for a synchronous IO operation in conjunction with system code batching. Our evaluation showed that the performance for large file transferring can be spared due to I.O. offloading. Unfortunately, long-term support kernels are not aligned with latest I.O. using functionalities. Therefore, we customize and rework I.O. using as a generic Linux kernel module which can be loaded on demand. Finally, we took several real-world applications to validate the combination of system code batching and a single I.O. with only a few lines of code modification against these applications. A long-running event-driven application tends to face the challenge of sudden burst of requests and get involved in the system code, especially for I.O. operations. In this talk, we would like to introduce our work, ISCA, which stands for Effective System Code Aggregation, to achieve visible performance improvements. From the perspective of an application, each CPU cycle spent on the system code interface is wasted and cannot used for application-specific computing. An old idea, system code batching was introduced to reduce system code overhead. That is, the bundling of several successive but potentially not direct related system code, which only incurs the kernel transition cost of single system code. We propose and implement an efficient system code batching scheme in to reduce the number of kernel boundary crossing suitable for event-driven servers. Full system code compatibility has been guaranteed by design in conjunction with real applications, including widely adopted web servers 
and key value store. The asynchronous and the parallel execution of system code is being evaluated to eliminate unwanted latency, not limited to within the same batch. It's very disappointing that Meltdown and Spectral even increase the system code overhead. The hardware weakness allows program to steal data which is currently processed on the computer. Kernel table isolation, KPTI, is Linux kernel feature that mitigates the, the meltdown by isolating user space and kernel space memory. It dramatically increases the cost of mode switch directly by switching the active page table at each context transition and uh, indirectly by subsequent longer lasting performance penalty from the TLB flashes triggered by these address space changes. Let's look into the CPU mode switch. A system code is associated with CPU mode switch. It can be illustrated as a flow chart. First, in the user space, the wrapper function to system code would trap into CPU privilege mode. Then, the corresponding system code handler is executed upon the request. We also write a program to measure the cost of CPU mode switch. And uh, you can try to run the, pro the tool and uh, contribute your result back to us. An event-driven system typically consists of event handler, event listener, and event channels. Event-driven application usually has infinite loops which listen to incoming requests and designates these events to relevant handlers. And listener only knows the events are transpired. Also, this handler might interact with the underlying operating system, which means additional system call invocation. Concurrent and keep a live connection request to the web server result in the mixture of CPU bound and IO bound processes. In addition, the event-driven architecture is composed of multiple microservices. Although the, the overhead of system code are getting cheaper nowadays, it is still a big issue for this IO intensive and event driven application. Frequent invocation of system call may hamper the performance. Tech engineers, for example, once we analyze the distribution of system call invocation in one, one stress nginx instance, we found that same file system code takes 75% of CPU time. Open and closed system code contribute to about 4% of CPU time. That is, NGX itself is indeed an IO bound program affected by frequent system code invocation. Let's conclude the challenge while we attempt to eliminate the overhead of Linux system calls. Up here, the present moment, we can conclude the change as following. Changing behavior of system call might incur compatibility and system security issues. 
This is called decoupling might violate the design of the, the these applications unexpectedly. Some common system code, such as uh, receive multiple messages and send multiple messages, involve heavy application adaptation in order to outperform the combination of system code invocation. Before concentrating on our work, I would like to address the related work which inspired ISCA. Batch is a Linux kernel module which executes a batch of system code. That is, the number of CPU modes switch can be reduced, but its constrained programming model prevents the existing program from being adopted. FastSC was an excellent research project which highlights the power of synchronous I.O. model, but it was totally incompatible with this kernel and uh, the user land. Other research projects and the prototypes, such as system code clustering, showed preliminary performance gain, but they were not intended to follow this kernel model and facility. To decouple system codes, we need to prevent system code in the batching segment from switching into kernel space. Then we need to invoke system code handler indirectly for further programming feasibility. So inspired by Lowe's previous work, we propose ISCA, Effective System Code Aggregation, and aims at suppressing the drawback from previous work. So instead of persistently reducing the overhead of single system code, ISCA focuses on lowering the overhead of multiple system code. By decoupling legacy system codes, ISCA effectively reduces times of more switch. Moreover, ISCA also has following feature. ISCA is functional safe. There are two reasons. First, we pack kernel modification into a kernel module, which can prevent applications that do not use ISCA from being affected. Second, application with ISCA can be executed without super user do. And ISCA is also easy to deploy to real-world application for both reasons. First, there is no kernel modification required to apply it. Second, it requires only two lines of code changing against existing application. Okay, let's give an example about how ISCA works. As shown in left hand side, it is a normal user level code segment enclosed by API batch start and batch flush provided by ISCA. After entering batching segment, the behavior of system code will be changed. In step 1 to 3, System calls neither switch to kernel mode nor invocate relative system call handlers. Instead, they only record their system call ID and arguments to the share table. In step 4, after leaving the batching segment, batch flush, a user label system call wrapper, was triggered. It actually helped the procedure to trap into the kernel space. In step 5 to 7, ISCA invocates a flushing handler which travels the share table and serially invocates corresponding system code handlers. In this page, we will discuss the implementation of ISCA. There are three keys to construct ISCA. First, we decouple system calls by overriding glibc system code wrapper and indirectly invocate system call from kernel space. Second, we provide an efficient way for user space and kernel space to communicate with each other. To achieve it, we map virtual address space, which is allocated in user space, to physical pages. Third, we provide function for user to control ISCA. It is achieved by a new hooking system call that hints ISCA where is the entry of batching point and flushing point. In this page, I will explain how we benchmark ISCA. In the following page, the experiments are conducted under synchronous I.O. model. The improvement is benefit from batching. 
To measure throughput with different applications, we need different benchmarking tool depends on the type of the applications. For web server, we use WRK, the modern HTTP benchmarking tool to generate the HTTP payloads. For Redis, we use its built-in benchmarking tool. On the other hand, to measure loading, we record the time of application taken in the main loop to complete a certain number of requests. The experiments are conducted under an AWS T4G the micro instance powered by ARM 64-based AWS Graviton 2 processors. The characteristic of AWS instance we used is shown in the right-hand side table. In this page, we will summarize the application which can benefit from ISCA. As two types of the most classic event-driven application, we choose the web server and the key value database as experiment target. In a web server, we deploy ISCA to Lighty and Nginx. In key value database, we, de we will deploy ISCA to Redis. We believe ISCA works on most event-driven application, but because of the time, we only show the result of well-known event-driven application. In this page, we will show the throughput of lighting with and without ISCA. As shown in the figure on the left hand side, in transmitting small payload scenario, lighting ISCA brings 23% improvement in the best case. It brings 8% improvement in the average. However, on the right hand side, we found lighting ISCA doesn't gain significant improvement in large payload scenario. In this page, we will show the throughput of Nginx with and without ISCA, as shown in the figure on the left hand side. In transmitting small payload scenario, Nginx ISCA brings 12% improvement in the best case. It brings 7% improvement in the average. However, on the right hand side, we also found Nginx ISCA doesn't gain significant improvement in large payload scenario. Besides the throughput, we also care about the loading after applying ISCA. We measure it by counting the time application taken in the main loop to complete 5,000 requests. Client requests the file with 20 kilobytes each time. Also, the experiments are done with the different connection number, which are between 10 and 200 connection. We found both Lighty ISCA and Engine ISCA stay less time in the main loop than vanilla application do. In the previous experiment, we observed the ISCA would not improve the performance of transmitting large files as small files do. This is because of the batching latency. As shown in the figure, task B handling smaller payload suffer less overhead from the batching latency. A low batching latency may lower the benefit brought from ISCA. However, it is bounded. The reason is the accumulated system calls will be executed at the latest when leaving the patient segment. There are only the first few requests being delayed. It is a good idea to make a trade-off between delays in the few requests and the overall performance improvement. Beyond the web server, we also explore another type of event-driven application. Redis acts as an in-memory database, cache, and a message broker. It is designed under event-driven architecture, which aims at providing high-performance service to clients. We found ISCA also works on key-value database. We use built-in benchmark and set the connection number as 100, pipeline number as 16, and the total number of requests as 100,000. We found readily ISCA improved 2.8% and 4.4% in set and get operation, respectively. So here, we will talk about the limitation of ISCA. First, the user of ISCA is responsible for finding the system call intensive call segment and marking it as a batching segment. Second, batching latency might be harmful to the performance, especially for the large payload scenario. Third, the segment is not always batchable due to the deferred execution of the system calls in ISCA. For correctness, we need to ensure that there are no dependency issues in the batching segment. By means of batching, it indeed reduces the overhead for most switches. However, it is not a general solution for all scenarios. Further, 
the scalability and the synchronous I.O. model remain questionable. Considering these two issues, we will explore another opportunity to fix them. We then explore the opportunity to adapt another method. Current official Nginx is not possible to avoid blocking operation in every case. And to solve this problem, the new third post mechanism was implemented in Nginx version 1.7.11. In Nginx, when AIO3 was configured, worker process of Nginx of low blocking operation to the thread pool. It convert I.O. model into a synchronous manner. Nginx become non-blocking and asynchronous model now. In the investigation of Nginx, it claims that AIO thread boosts performance 31 times in transmitting large payload scenario. So, in the next part, we will focus on non-blocking and asynchronous I.O. model. So in non-blocking I.O. model, system call return immediately if data is not available. Then use the procedure keep polling or does something else until the data is available. Finally, if the data is available, processor will chirp into the kernel and execute corresponding system call handler. In a synchronous I.O. model, no matter data is available or not, control will return immediately from the kernel space. Process will continue the execution of user level code. And there is a kernel thread is responsible for offloading the task. After the completion of the task, kernel thread will signal user process. So a synchronous I.O. model actually exists a while. The POSI AIO is a user level implementation that performs normal blocking I.O. in multiple threads, hence giving the illusion that the I.O. are asynchronous. Although the performance remains questionable, this is flexible to use. It works with any file system, works on non-buffer file descriptor. On the other hand, Linux AIO is the kernel support for asynchronous I.O. operations, where the I.O. requests are actually queued up in the kernel and uploaded to the actual disk as a synchronous operation. However, if file using direct I.O., it might fall back to synchronous I.O. model. So let's check out the new interface IOURIN. It is a new asynchronous IO API for Linux created by James Espo from Facebook. It aims at providing an API without the limitation of previous libAIO. It is designed with following feature. First, it is extendable. IOURIN works on block-oriented IO, networking, and non-blocking storage. It retains asynchronous when doing buffered IO, Second, it is efficient. Ream buffer are shared between the user and the kernel space by batching and executing system code asynchronously. It can help lower the times of most switches. However, IORIM also allows pre-registered buffer and file descriptor, which can save the mapping time. Third, thanks to simplified interface, liburin, it is easier to use IORIM. Also, IORIM provides better scalability since its core specialization. In this page, we will illustrate the general executing path of application applying IORIM. To use IORIM, application must initialize system configuration such as the depth of the queue. For each IO operation, application first get the next available entry of submission queue, then prepare and fill the information of task and that entry. Finally, Submit those accumulated tasks. After submission, kernel thread will handle those tasks and submission queue. When tasks are complete, they will be appended to the tail of completion queue. Then completion queue informs the application. In this page, we show some performance results done by author of IO Ring. We show the statistic measured in 2019. The performance of IORIN is measured by randomly reading from the block device or file. POSI AIO gets 608,000 IO operations per second. IORIN without polling gets 1.2 million IOPS, and IORIN with polling gets 1.7 million IOPS. There is also statistic measured by FIO in October 2021. IORIN with polling gets 10 million IOPS. In this page, we show how different the design is 
of echo server writing in liburine. A lot liburine provides a simplified interface for application. The application apply IO urine might change its entire design logic. In this page, we show how a simple echo server construct by IO urine. As shown in the right hand side, echo server with IO urine is implemented as finite state machine like program and which is far more different from traditional one. In the following page, we will introduce a synchronous version ISCA, which adopt a synchronous I.O. model and remain the design of deploy application. In this page, we will show how ISCA work with AIO. In the first step, ISCA changed the behavior of system call by overriding system call wrapper. I.O. operation will not trip into the kernel immediately. In the second step, ISCA will route requests to different shared table to achieve load balancing. Then when the location of shared table is decided, in the step 3, ISCA then fill system call type and its parameter into the entry we decided. After that, in the step 4, kernel worker thread will offload those tasks. Finally, in last step, ISCA will generate an interrupt when requests are completed. Because of the characteristic of the synchronous I.O. model, the error handling of it might be different from synchronous one. In synchronous I.O. model, as shown in the left-hand side code segment, error handling can appear immediately after I.O. operation. Unlike synchronous I.O. model, a synchronous I.O. might be get return value immediately after I.O. operation. Instead, we need to block to wait specific number of I.O. operations to complete. After that, we then check then whether need to do error handler. We measure the performance of ISCA with AIO by deploying it to Lighty. In the experiment, client requires file with 500 kilobytes each time. Those tasks will be offloaded to two specific CPU. We found ISCA with AIO improved the performance up to 30%. The reason might be that season code won't block in a synchronous model and the user level procedure can keep executing. Also, tasks are offloaded to different cores which provide better core specialization and affinity. In this page, we will discuss the occasion to use ISCA or ISCA with AIO. When hardware resources are limited, it is more appropriate to use ISCA, which reduces the overhead of more switches and the benefit from system code batching. However, when hardware resources are sufficient, it is more suitable to use ISCA with AIO, which offloads the task and makes better core specialization. It is our honor to announce the availability of ISCA. You can get the latest source code at GitHub. At the present, the work is licensed under MIT license. In addition to Linux kernel module and user space program, the test group will include for reproducing the S premiums. You can generate different workload with the scripts as shown in the window both nginx and lighty can run faster with iska the main subject of this work was to reduce persistent code overhead through the use of effective system code aggregation for that purpose iska take the advantage of system code batching and uh, exploits the parallelism of even joint application by leveraging Linux IO model to overcome the disadvantage of previous solutions. Although the current implementation needs further improvements, the ev evaluation sh showed the main subject can be achieved. Real world highly concurrent event-driven applications such as Nginx and uh, Regix are known to benefit from ISCA, along with full compatibility with Linux system core semantics and the functionalities. Our findings can be used by Linux developer for the sake of long-term system core maintenance. 
in particular with system code aggregation mechanisms such as ISCA, the kernel API can be kept clean and elegant without the need of macro system codes such as uh, send multiple messages and receive multiple messages which combine various kernel operations. If there was a batching system code, the above can be implemented in user space, reducing the kernel capacity and still ensuring the performance. We are about to publish the comprehensive material about system code aggregation and AIO consolidation as academic papers. Please inform us of your interest in correlation and further in investigations. The draft can be provided provide upon request. So, do you have any question about our work? We appreciate your participation in Open Source Summit Japan and look forward to communicating with you. Thanks in advance. Thank you.